In the last movie, I told you that Rails is structured in such a way that it helps us to write dry code. Remember, dry stands for don't repeat yourself. In this movie, I want us to take a closer look at the MVC architecture that Rails uses. It's a fundamental aspect of Rails that's important to understand right from the start. So we have M, V, and C. The M stands for model, the V stands for view, and the C stands for controller. The model refers to the data objects that we use. It's the object-oriented approach to design. Many things can be objects in our models, but the data in our database will be the most common type of object that we'll put there. The view is the presentation layer. It's what the user sees and interacts with, essentially the web pages, the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. The controller processes and responds to user events, such as clicking on links and submitting forms. The controller will make decisions based on the request and then control what happens in response. It controls the interaction with our models and with our views. Let's take a look at a couple of diagrams that I think will make this clearer. First, let's take a look at basic web architecture. This is a non-MVC architecture. We have a browser that interacts with a web page. Of course, there's a web server sitting in between them, but this is a simplified view. This web page might have lots of code that makes decisions and finally outputs something back to the browser. And if it's database enabled, it can interact with the database, pull information out, and then return that back to the browser. But the code to do all of these things is in one page, a single long script. The MVC architecture breaks that single page up by function. The browser communicates to the controller, which contains only the code involved in making decisions about what should happen based on that browser request. Then if we need to interact with the database, the controller will talk to our model. And our model will put all the code related to our data and to connecting to the database. And then the model will return its results back to the controller. The controller can go back to the model if it needs, and the model can go back to the database, and so on. But finally, when the controller is ready to return a result to the browser, it will send its results to the view, the presentation layer, which contains the code related to what HTML, CSS, and JavaScript should be returned back to the browser. Essentially, we've just taken that one single web page and broken it up based on its function into the controller, the model, and the view. The controller handles decisions, the model handles the data, and the view handles presentation. Rails is built using this MVC architecture, and we want to try and follow this architecture and keep our code in the right places. Decision code goes in the controller, data code goes in the model, presentation code goes in the view. Rails actually has names for the code libraries it uses for these three parts. It calls the controller action controller, and the view action view, and the model is active record. Notice that that's active record, not action record, like the other two. Those names will become familiar as we work with Rails. We're going to be accessing parts of active record when we write code in a model. Rails also packages together action controller and action view as action pack. So if you ever see the term action pack, it's just action controller and action view grouped together as one thing. They're very closely related. So keep this MVC architecture in mind as we continue to work. We'll come back and look at this diagram periodically. It will help you to understand how Rails structures things and where we should be putting our code.